YouTube! What is going on? It's your boy Buddha back in the building for another Last Cloudia video, another unit showcase. Uh, in this video, I wanted to go over five star Spirit Maiden Tyria. Uh, one, because her newest banner just came out. I call it hers because she's the one everyone's looking at when you check out this Ultra DOH Festival banner that just dropped. Uh, she's on Raid Up. Now, here's the thing, guys. There are a couple things to note with this banner. Uh, when we're looking at the Raid Ups, like let's say you start a brand new account and you're re-rolling one of your target characters, the Spirit Maiden Tyria. Uh, if you're re-rolling, you have access to the 72-hour Start Dash banner in which Spirit Maiden Tyria is also on Raid Up. And her rate up on that banner is actually going to be a 0.8% versus this banner where she's at a 0.5%. I mean, that's approaching almost half the likelihood that you're able to pull Spirit Main Interior on this banner versus the Start Dash. And on the Start Dash, I believe Zekis, Lilibet, and DeGrog are on there as well. Maybe not DeGrog, but uh, I know that these first three that we're looking at are as well. Now, the kicker with this one is that Kagutsuchi, the UR, is also on Raid Up. That's not even accessible on the Start Dash banner. But these are things that you'll want to take into consideration before choosing which banner to spend your reroll crystals on. Now, another point is that a lot of people already are summoning on this Chasing Tyria. If you're a mid to end game account, uh, you don't have access to the 72 hour start dash banner anymore. You've been waiting for a chance to get Tyria, right? If you're going for her on the Super DOH banner, that's a long shot because your chances are very slim here with no characters being on raid up. It's a super, super diluted pool. Uh, but now we have this Ultra DOH banner giving Tyria on raid up. You're like, oh, I'm dumping all my crystals in order to get her. Well, I would advise you to take caution if I caught you in time with this announcement. I was talking back and forth with the boys yesterday, the, the Power Creek podcast crew. And Tweaks brought up a really good point that uh, New Year's is around the corner. Not quite right around the corner, still about two months away. However, when we do get the New Year's celebration, they will most likely bring back the DOH Selector Banner. Now that is a banner where for 30,000 crystals, we saw it during the two year anniversary, for 30,000 crystals, you get an actual selector ticket, which allows you to pick from a list of DOH characters. Uh, Spirit Maid Interior was on the list last time, so she would be on the list this time. So rather than throwing crystals here at a chance, a very low chance of getting Spirit Maid Interior, congrats to anyone who gets her ahead of time. But if you can be patient and you're planning on sticking around for the long haul in this game, it's probably more worth it to save up about 30,000 crystals in order to guarantee yourself Spirit Maid Interior from that selector banner. So be warned, if you dump your crystals here and don't get her, you may have lost your chances to save up 30k in order to get her guaranteed whenever they bring back that DOH selector, which will likely be on New Year's. But there's all the information for you guys to make your decisions. For me personally, I like guaranteed things, especially as a free-to-play slash budget player. So my goal would be to save up 30,000 and hold that for when that DOH selector comes around. If I have a exact character I was looking for, like for myself, I used that to pick up Sage Emperor Zekis, a decision I don't regret at all. Uh, totally worth it and absolutely more worth it for Spirit Maid Interior. So we've got her banner here, but people are going to roll for this banner nonetheless, because not everyone's gonna be around for those two months. Let's face it, people drop this game left and right just because of other reasons. But uh, if you are able to summon for her and you are able to pull her, you've been told she's one of the best characters in the game, but the question is then why is she one of the best characters in the game? And that's what we're gonna be focusing on in this video. The thing with Spirit Maid Interior, she offers such a ridiculous amount of utility all packaged into one character. Typically our support characters in this game fulfill, uh, they're very strong, but they fulfill maybe one role in terms of team buffing or, de or enemy debuffing, right? You may have a character who's very dominant at healing, uh, you may have a 
character that's very dominant at team buffing, and you may have a character that's very dominant at enemy debuffing. Uh, a lot of characters maybe can do two out of those three if you build them a certain way. Tyria can do all of the above, all into one character. Because of the amount of SC saves that she has in her kit, by SC saves, I'm talking about skills that she comes innately, right? All of these like Shadow Wall 2, this is going to cost you 0 SC to use. Magic Castle 2, uh, Starlight Heal, uh, Grand Protection, all of these skills pretty much allow her to be two different uh, roles without ever even spending any SC, that being team healing and team defensive buffing. So from there, I consulted with the podcast crew and said, hey guys, take a look at this build. Let me know what changes you would make to a general support Tyria build. And they came back with a lot of feedback for me and I was able to put together this build right here, which you can actually find in the Buddha Gang Discord I have in the LC unit builds uh, for reference. I do have that page. If you come, if you have like a really, really solid build for a character that either fulfills a very specific use or is just very good overall, that's where I like to showcase these builds in this uh, nicely packaged format. This is the build that we're going to be showcasing Tyria within this video. And I basically just want to bring her, I want to show you before and afters in certain scenarios with Spirit Maiden Tyria why she is so ridiculous on any team and can transform an account as soon as she enters your roster. The thing with Tyria is that you can build her in so many ways and there's really not a bad way to build Tyria because she's just so useful without ever adding anything extra on top of her kit. All you need to do is really unlock her ability board. Uh, but let I just want to go and dive into her kit a little bit, starting with her traits to emphasize some of just the main reasons. Just putting her on the team already makes your entire setup better. So her first trait, Oracle's Guidance, all allies periodically get faint nil. Take minus 20% damage from most numerous enemy type. So this first trait already is ridiculous. Uh, all allies periodically get faint nil. For those of you who don't know, I think Tiri is the only character to give the team buff faint nil. If your character takes a certain amount of hits, it's not really specific to damage on your character. It's kind of an invisible bar you can't see. But after a certain amount of time, your character's been getting hit with certain enemy attacks. That eventually causes them to go into this state where stars are floating around their head and they can't move for 30 seconds. Tyria, just by sitting there, makes that never an issue for the team. As long as she's alive and on the field, I know this says periodically gets faint nil, but as long as she's on the field, your characters cannot be fainted, which is enormous already. Uh, then we've got the take minus 20% damage from most numerous enemy type. So in stages where you're fighting like three dragons and two creatures, you're going to be taking less damage from the dragons than the creatures. But let's say you go up against a boss and there's only one boss enemy, you're just immediately taking minus 20% damage from that enemy. So boom, right there already you got team tankiness at your disposal. Then for her second one, Spirit Maiden's Favor. Cost of 10 plus MP healing magic is decreased by 20%. HP healing cap plus 3,500. So now she can heal for 12,000 or no, 13,499 innately. Usually your healing cap is the same as damage caps. Uh, you have to increase them past 9,999 or else they can't go any higher. Uh, so she automatically gets more healing out of her healing. And when healing an ally HP with magic skill or special, give a barrier of 1250 to healed unit. That means the unit can soak up 1,250 damage before it actually starts hitting their health bar. Stupid ridiculous busted. Then just looking at her abilities, wide area light combo attack that pushes away enemies in a wide area around the unit. Uh, that's just going to help with a little bit of crowd control from time to time. Uh, Moonlight Feather, all allies take minus 27% damage, heal a single basic status ailment, and gain plus one resistance to it. Right there, with that combined with her trait one, you've got minus, just about minus 50% damage taken. Uh, Aetherwind is just a moderate HP to all, heal to all allies, which ends up like healing everyone to max if you're able to pop it off. And then her special, which is in truly incredible, 
Oracle Feather, all allies get an HP cap of plus 3,000, are revived and greatly recover, and take physical damage minus 50%. So if you can, and this is a temporary buff when you do proc it, so it's not going to be just forever after it's activated. Uh, this 3,000 HP cap will go away, the minus 50% damage will go away, but once like Oracle Feather, Moonlight Feather are all active at the same time, your team is literally invincible for that duration of time. Uh, so there you go. That's just in her kit. We haven't even gotten into her spell casting, right? So let's take a look at the spells that I have added on her. You can see all the zeros, all the SC zeros, those are all innate skills that she has. God heal, the best single target healing ability. Starlight heal is a non-time stop HP for all allies, which is a great. Uh, cure all is incredibly effective. High resurrection is a, res is a resurrection for a teammate. Uh, but she also comes with a race, which removes a random stat debuff from an, uh, from a unit. I just never use that. I never find a reason to use that. So I don't put it in her kit to avoid spell cluttering, but you know, there's really no reason not to have it in her kit. If you don't mind, uh, comes with grand protection, comes with magic castle. So there's already, uh, more damage mitigation for your physical damage or your magic damage being taken. And then here's where she gets crazy. Because she comes with so many SC saves for spells, this is what the boys were telling me. You can add so much more utility to her, including more team buffs like things Fort Phaser and Metis Phaser, which the defense plus 20% is going to add to more physical damage mitigation. Metis Phaser Mind plus 20% is not only going to add to more magic damage mitigation, but it's also going to add to more Proud Force heals on your physical attackers if they don't already come up, come with the skill Autis, uh, Auto Matisse. Uh, then we've got, I have Critical Phaser, phaser on her just, uh, just to have it, right? You can customize these different phasers or teammate buffs however you see fit or whatever you have available i like the phaser abilities because they're all allies right they're easy you don't have to single out a teammate in order to use a specific spell on them but they did have a good point where if you just want to use the single target critical buff uh, that saves you 5 sc and a lot of your physical dps already comes with either auto critical or fast critical uh, so this phaser may go to waste depending on who's on your team. However, I just had it on there because I think the last scenario I used Spirit Maiden Tyria in, I could actually take advantage of this. Uh, but then we've got not only team buffs, but now we're moving into enemy debuffs. Things like the Giga Blazers, all enemies strength down. Uh, Giga Drain, Defense Down, Lostoma, Intelligence Down, Nemesis is minus 20% to Mind. So we've now got a 20% decrease to all enemy stats whenever we want. Then I've got Weak to decrease all attribute resistances. And then we move back into what she comes with innately, which she's the only one who has access to these Wall 2s, which are an extra 15% uh, on top of what you can usually teach people, which is wall one. So flame wall would be minus 20%, but she comes with minus 35% element specific damage mitigations, just accessible to you. Uh, now, a point that you should think about is also to avoid spell clutter, just to decrease the amount of spells when you're going through the list, when you have her in battle, you can take these off depending on what battle you're fighting but if you don't mind having a ton of spells to sift through in battle then just having these all in her kit just make her ready to deal with any enemies that you are potentially facing uh, she even comes with no attribute wall which we can now teach other units but she, originally she was the only one to have this uh, which is at the minus 20 percent to no attribute damage very useful in many situations and then this holy circle this is here just to represent the six sc you kind of want to save in order to put the relevant circle so i run a lot of dark attackers either luxeus or sheeta so holy circle comes into use because it's now another enemy debuff to reduce the dark resistance of that enemy by even more so now we've got that subtracting by 20 dark resistance and then we have weak subtracting all attributes by 20 and those do stack so i can already get a minus 40 percent with tyria to whichever enemy 
uh, I might be fighting at a, at a point in time. That's a lot of her bread and butter, right? We're covering all aspects of support in the game. Healing, team buffing, enemy debuffing, all in one character with plenty of SC to spare. You can see we're running a 90 out of 98. I have a, I've pulled a couple duplicates of Tyria, which is why I can push her up to 98, but I'm running this 90 SC build uh, to represent someone who has only pulled her once and then five starred her. Passive skills, what I used to do is run like all my HP ups and all of my MP ups in the past, but honestly, what the guys were pointing out is that it's better served to reserve that SC in order to give her all of the spell casting utility that you can. And I gotta say, I'm not disappointed in the in that change at all. So we do have HP up max two HP, uh, or we do have HP up max. We have HP plus two. Uh, the MP up 2, 3, and max. Uh, magic defense up max. So I didn't really give her any uh, magic. I didn't really give her any stat buffs up. Besides from like the really uh, efficient returns, right? HP up max, 20% for 5 SC is good. HP plus 2, 1,000 for 4 is very good. HP up 2 and 3. Uh, 3 is really the best return for your SC because it's 2 SC for 12% MP. Uh, but I think MP up 2... Uh, three right this total combo for eight sc we're getting plus 40 percent mp is very good and you really want a ton of mp on tyria because her mp regen is more reliant on auto advanced circles rather than like a manual uh, regeneration mp strategy so you want her mp pool very large so she can regenerate naturally and passively more so than not uh, she comes with magic defense up max. You might be saying, why don't you have more magic defense up maxes on her since that's what determines your healing capabilities. And what the guys were telling me is that she doesn't need more at magic defense up than what she already comes with, both innately in her stats and then with this magic defense up max built in her. She doesn't need more magic defense ups in order to get those max heals. Uh, so that allows you to save that SC for more skills. Things like auto protection, I put on her for an extra minus 20% to physical damage being taken. Uh, she comes with all these healing boosts. It's just absurd. It's absurd. Ale of Honor is going to be incredible for you since she comes with Archangel's Blessing. You slap Ale of Honor, so whenever you're taking on wave-to-wave -wave content, you're going to have full MP all the time because every wave end, she's going to be getting 40% of her MP back. Uh, a movable object I put on her just because it's a pretty staple uh, caster skill in order to not be interrupted. If she's casting a spell that does take longer than instant casting, she won't be flinched out of her spell casting. Comes with high level magic chant, comes with rapid recovery. Uh, she comes with these two uh, unique skills, Miracle Ceremony and Hymn of Resolve, which you can read are just ridiculous. Cost of 10 plus MP magic buffs on allies minus 20%. That includes herself. Hymn of Resolve when reviving allies with magic specials target unit defense in mind plus 25%. She is nuts, guys. So here we go. We went over the kit. Uh, no, we didn't because we got to look at equips. Heaven's Cry, you might be saying, why do you have that staff equipped to her? Well, simply because it has the biggest MP stat attached to it. Uh, and that's what's important. You want a lot of MP increasing on Tyria. Like I said, you want to start out with a ton of MP so that even when you're using all of these debuffs and buffs and healing spells, it's decreasing your MP by just a small margin. And then when you either clear the wave or you're able to recharge, you're able to bounce back even if you cast a ton in that one wave. Junihito is what I, how I think you say it. Again, another just great robe uh, with 700 HP stat, another 25 MP, and very good defensive stats on it. This can be changed out for the Arc Ether reward from Galliano Falls. I personally just don't have that AER farmed up, uh, but I can go ahead and show it to you because it comes with ridiculous, ridiculous stats in the defensive department like i'm saying uh, you can see uh not the intelligence but the it's another mp plus 50 which is double that of the junitito junihito however you say it and some sizable defensive stats and more, ma mainly this huge mind stat as well also comes with all this like fire damage mitigation which is great and some resistances that are helpful uh, so that's a very, very good robe for Tyria. It's just not the one that we currently have on her because I don't have it. So uh, this one's a very good replacement, especially with that HP bump. It's very nice. Uh, Radmoon Stone's very, very good. 
it might be the only equip that I'd say is close to essential on her for that casting speed and 30 extra MP is also great. Although with her five star buff, she gets auto recast, which doesn't make this as necessary, but it will definitely help more times than not. Uh, Brooch of the seven butterflies is just also one of the best accessories to run on your support and especially spirit man interior with that 77 increase to mp 777 to uh health regen and it or to to her hp pool and it gives her continuous regeneration and magic barrier which is permanent two things she actually doesn't come with so it's not redundant to actually run this on her for the trait even more defensive support incredible beautiful setup here a ton of alternatives you can run like i said anything that comes with big mp big defense and big hp stats really can't go wrong on tyria but that's the setup that we're running on her now with all that being talked about uh we're going to take we're going to run a couple stages and look at how it goes without tyria and then with tyria on the team just to show how much of a difference dealing with difficult stages is with her on your team. I want to start with our familiar friend, Pablo, or Pablo Boria in here, because it'll be a very quick and easy example of the difference Tyria can make, especially in damage mitigation for the team. So we're going to just run our boy Maja uh, and see what happens during Pablo's first nuke. Uh, if my suspicions are correct i think he's immediately going to kill even with convergence we might live with convergence but just pay attention to uh, how hard this ultimate hits uh so here goes maja we're immediately taking no damage because of his uh, effect oh wow okay so that was a really poor example since maja has his barrier up uh <laughs> let's go ahead and bring a different character We'll go ahead and throw Sheeta to the wolves and see what happens uh, before and after since uh, Sheeta doesn't have any like HP barriers going on, which I didn't even consider. Alright, here is the ultimate. Let's see what happens to Sheeta without any defensive support. And Pablo's nuke, as we know, just completely obliterates him in one shot. So now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and check out what Tyria offers the team just by being there. Let me not forget to mention the arc, uh, a very, very powerful arc on Tyria just to be there is Ancient Weapon Lugan. Defense mine plus 15%, damage from critical hits minus 50%, but then also damage from bosses minus another 15%. So just a ton of damage mitigation and increase to her defensive stats. You can't really go wrong there. Oh, plus I should mention these fat defense mind and HP stats that get thrown on top of Tyria just by running this arc. So great arc for any defensive unit that you're running. But now we're going to go in and we're actually we're going to utilize Tyria's spells, right? Because we have so many available to us. Uh, we're going to see how many we're able to cast before Pablo does proc the ult. So we already know from Tyria's trait, we're getting minus 20% damage mitigation because there's only one type of enemy on the field. Uh, but let's go ahead and start with what I know will help. And that is a flame wall, since uh, you got to think about these walls, not as they're protecting from the element that they are, but they're the protecting from the element that they're strong against. So fire is strong against earth. Pablo is attacking us with earth elements, so flame wall is going to be that damage mitigation. So we went ahead and activated that. We also know that Pablo's ultimate is a physical attack, which Grand Protection is going to help us with. So we pop Grand Protection. There's the flame wall. There's Grand Protection. And then just to see if I can get uh, something else that's going to help us, I'm going to go ahead and pop Giga Blazer, which is going to lower Pablo's strength stat. And if we can pop that in time, there's Giga Blazer. We're looking good. Can I get a fourth one, that being Giga Drain? I'm sorry, let's get a team buff going on, which Fort Phaser will increase our defenses, helping us survive Pablo's first ultimate. I uh, don't know if we'll be able to. We did. We got the Fort Phaser off, so we've got all the defensive buffs possible. We're looking at 9s, 10s, 1s, 2s, and not even half health was, taking, was taken from both of these. So an attack that originally destroyed Sheeta in one animation now can't even two-shot us if Pablo was to 
attack again with that same thing which for this fight in specific he only does that ultimate now and then at the very end of the fight so as long as you can remember to keep those buffs up because don't forget these are temporary buffs they don't last forever so they do need to be recast but if you can just time it right and activate these things when you know an attack is coming like we knew that that ultimate was coming you're fine you're set and that especially helps with your no death clears on a lot of different stages uh, especially in pablo's stage right here for example so there's a prime example of what tyria offers in terms of survivability on your team uh, and that's not even getting into the healing that tyria could then be doing as we continue this fight I think another great example, and probably how I'm going to wrap up the showcase, is with the Occulted God of Old Fight. In round one, uh, we know that the boss does two, or yeah, she does two very nuclear attacks. One at the start and one at the end. Now we're just going to test out the one that happens at the beginning of this stage with this team right here. So right, we've got Luxeus, who's our DPS. We've got Gen, who's our Watt battery. But then let's just say you have Ruto, who does have some very potent abilities in terms of keeping the team alive. That being this first one, I think, Warcry, when taking damage from enemies' attacks that target all, which is what this first attack we're going to see is considered, damage to unit plus 100% damage and to allies minus 50% damage. So right there, you would think Ruto with all of his other tanking capabilities may be able to be the key to surviving this attack that we're going to witness. If I remember correctly, before I ran Spirit Maid Interior on this stage, it's just not going to be enough. We're going to see Ruto get clapped, and then we're going to see the rest of the team just crumble as soon as Ruto dies. Uh, so all we need to do is get uh, Leva here down to a certain health threshold. So I'll just pop Watt for the purposes of the showcase immediately. Uh, we'll go ahead and do some God Impacts to take her health down. And the spell should be coming up momentarily. Alright, we hit the HP threshold. So here it comes. So watch Ruto's health start flying down, right? And it's so many hits. As soon as she kills Ruto... It's literally done. Now we've got revives on the team, so we could keep continuing, but now I want to show what happens when we bring Tyria. <laughs> so we've got Tyria here, same setup, nothing changed, and it's all about utilizing the certain spells, not only the ones that come in her kit, but also the ones that we've been able to place on her because of the massive SC saves that she already has. Uh, so here we go. We know what's coming, uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and get prepared now. Uh, we know that Leva attacks with the Light Element, so Shadow Wall 2 is going to decrease the amount of damage we take from Light Attacks. So there's that. We're going to activate uh, Fort Phaser and Metis Phaser, just because I'm not sure which stat this particular attack targets. So we're just going to raise both defenses. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start getting some damage off on Leva so we don't lose these buffs before we actually deal the amount of damage that's needed. And then let's see what else we can cast. We can cast Giga Blazer in order to lower Leva's stats some more. Then we can cast Giga Lostoma just in case her attacks scale off intelligence. Uh, I think we've got both of them up. Yep, we've got Strength down, we've got Int down, we've got All down, Defense down. Uh, so we're probably about to hit that threshold, health threshold. I don't think Grand Protection or Magic Castle 2 work here since this is considered a special, if I'm not mistaken. But just in case, let's cast Grand Protection just in case it does help at all. But I'm pretty sure we have enough going on now. I could cast, uh, well, no, I couldn't, JK. But I think that's about all we can do in terms of what she can offer for damage mitigation. So let's go ahead and see what happens now that we have all of Tyria's defensive buffs active. Easy. Easy tanks. Easy tanks, guys. Please go back and look at what changed. How fast our lives just got decimated with that first run compared to having Tyria on the team and utilizing her spells. I mean, just ridiculous. Uh, I've yet to do it, but as long, like I said, this Leva will continue to cast these map-wide destructive attacks 
but as long as you can time your buffs, your team buffs and your enemy debuffs with Tyria, along with her healing, along with hers and Ruto's healing that would be naturally going on, it's just a completely different story and part of the reasons why she's just so insane as soon as you throw her on the team and utilize her correctly. But that's the Tyria showcase, y'all. Uh, just an absolute powerhouse of a unit. Uh, again, like we didn't utilize it too much since we didn't go fully into battle, but don't forget about the uh, utilizing circles, right? I have a couple of them, Ice Circle, Holy Circle, Shadow Circle. This could be toggled on and off depending on which one I want to use. And usually you only want to bring one at a time since that should be your main focus, your main DPS's element, and whichever uh, circle is relevant to that. Again, you can t toggle on these walls just to declutter your spell casting space. If you know you're only fighting Pablo, all you're going to need is Flame Wall or like Leva. All we would need is Shadow Wall. So those can be toggled on and off. Uh, she has so many alternatives to builds that you can take advantage of. There's really no way to go wrong with her other than like just not utilizing all of what she can bring to the team. Before, I really only used her as a team buffer in terms of using her walls and a team healer. But as you can see, she easily has enough space to include more team buffing spell spells like the Fort Phaser, Metis Phaser, Critical Phaser, and more enemy debuffing, that being the Blazers and the Circles. So make sure you're using her to her full potential. Other arcs that you can run on her if you were around and if you are still around during next Valentine's Day, you'll probably have a go at this LR. Once again, this is one of the best arcs to run on her. Before 5-starring her especially because it gives that healing magic casting speed plus 30%. Once you 5-star her and you get auto recast, this loses how good it is on her. But even the rest of the trade's very good if you're running other females on the team. Uh, then we've got Kaldina the Great is another awesome defensive stat stick 3500 uh well that's with a uh, max extensions on this arc but it's given about 3100 naturally health and then very nice defensive stats and then also just gives all allies max plus 10 percent hp and when close to death greatly restore hp and activate a barrier so that's another great arc to run on her demos even talked about for those missing certain ssr arcs maiden's prayer the sr arc is very very powerful as well because on women which tyria is considered MP plus 15%. I talked about how important it is to have a big MP pool on her. And recovery effects plus 20%, so even more assurance that you're going to be healing for that cap healing amount. Uh, very good. And then uh, not the best HP, or not the best stat increases, but for the trait alone, if you're missing some of those more powerful arcs, this can be an extremely good substitute in the meantime. I think that's all I got for you this time, guys. Like, subscribe, hit that bell notification if you are a Tyria simp because of how ridiculous she is. There really is no other support in the game that can offer as much to your team as she can. She can turn the game from hard mode to easy mode as you basically saw with those two very challenging fights. In terms of receiving damage, she makes it look like a cakewalk. Turn on all notifications. If you want to make sure and know exactly when I post a video, you won't be out of the loop in case of emergency situations. My final advice is summon wisely. If you can muster the patience, I would save up to 30k and hold out for one of those guaranteed DOH selectors. And with all that being said, y'all know what we say. Work hard, play harder. See you in the next video.